Good morning. Uh, today's topic of discussion is on bladder tumors. Essentially, bladder tumors commonly refers only to the transitional cell carcinomas or in today's terminology, urothelial cell carcinomas. Now, this uh, subject typically nowadays belongs to the field of urologists. Where do the general surgeons come in? General surgeons come in in uh, the diagnosis, in suspecting that there is a bladder tumor. And uh, second thing is, a part of the treatment might fall in the domain of general surgeons. So it is important for us to know what are the etiological causes, what is the type of presentation uh, that it gives and, in, and some parts of the diagnostic components. So the lecture will be delivered keeping in mind that there are certain sections of this uh, lecture which today belong largely uh, to the urologists. Now here of course is a picture of a bladder tumor. Uh, it's actually a picture of squamous cell carcinoma of the bladder which has involved the anterior wall of the vagina. What are the different types of bladder tumor? Like uh, it's a common urological cancer, right? highest recurrence rate of any malignancy. Uh, for example, if you uh, treat a case today, it's quite likely that it recurs several times during the first year after the treatment. So this is one of the phenomena that you have to keep in mind uh, when you are treating bladder tumor. And the most common variety, like I said, uh, is urothelial carcinoma. The next one is squamous cell carcinoma. And a third one is an adenocarcinoma. For example, the one that is arising from Eurekus uh, is typical case of adenocarcinoma and also sometimes rhabdomyosarcomas, carcinosarcomas, lymphomas, etc. Squamous cell carcinoma is the one that typically arises out of chronic irritation, for example, a stone in the bladder. So we will talk essentially more about this because this is the commonest uh, uh, carcinoma. Others as they come along. Now, are there any risk factors? If a patient presents to you with hematuria, then and you start taking his history, it's a good idea to know what are the different risk factors. Are they there or not? And the most important and commonest risk factor is smoking. Because smokers, for whatever reasons, it is not specifically known whether it is at a genetic level or is it at the level of the, uh, the cellular level uh, that, but smoking somehow makes a man prone uh, to uh, carcinoma bladder. All the chemicals which come uh, get into the circulation after smoking finally will enter the kidney and are cleared out in the urine. And uh, once they are cleared out in the urine, that gets stored in the bladder prior to maturation and there is enough time for these chemicals to act upon the urethelium of the bladder. So this is one very important risk factor and that should be kept in mind also when a patient is undergoing treatment because quite often uh, many patients give up uh, smoking uh, just when they are told prior to therapy and restart again uh, for during the follow-up. So this should be therefore kept in mind. What about family history? Yes, there are indeed some genetic factors which make uh, a family members uh, prone to this particular tumor. And, uh, but there is also this factor that a certain group of uh, a family might be working in the same kind of industries, for example. For instance, somebody, a father working in a rubber factory or a print factory might have a son who is similarly working. So therefore, uh, there is this exposure to chemicals which is common uh, between the members of a family apart from the genetic. And also cases like Lynch syndrome, where carcinoma colon is very common. Uh, for some, whatever reasons, uh, bladder care tumors are also common in that particular group of people. Chemical exposure, particularly aniline dyes, the first of the chemicals that were found to be incriminating uh, is aniline dyes. That is, uh, uh, and also those people who work in dye manufacturing industries in printing presses and uh, such other industries. So constant exposure to chemicals, discharged in urine, exposure to the urothelium, they are carcinogenic in nature. Chronic irritation, those of us who work in the field of surgery should be very cautious. Long-term catheterizations, it is not uncommon, particularly in a urological OPD, 
you will find a large number of patients who come with uh, catheters in place uh, for months together, sometimes years together. So if you have a long term uh, catheterization or somebody who's got a stone in the bladder, constant irritation and the catheters also form phosphatic encrustations uh, around the catheters and uh, these also cause irritation. So any kind of chronic irritation uh, can give rise to a malignancy. You have seen one picture of uh, uh, squamous cell carcinoma which I have shown you right in the beginning. So chronic irritation or even cystitis for instance, chronic cystitis can make you prone uh, to a malignancy. So it's very essential uh, to remember long term exposure to irritation. Age, uh, somehow men beyond the age of 70 uh, are more prone to CA bladders. So gender also I mentioned it occurs more often in men uh, than in women. There are situations where prior radiation has been given. It may be for any type of cancer. Prior radiation has been given to either to the lower abdomen or to the pelvis and that makes the bladder therefore prone uh, to, uh, its, uh, to formation of cancers. So prior radiation is important and anti-diabetic drugs particularly pioglitazone uh, has been uh, known uh, as a risk factor uh, for carcinoma of the bladder. So these are the various risk factors and when a patient comes to you with hematuria, it's a good idea to find out what went into producing that and uh, particularly if, if carcinoma bladder shows up in further investigations because there may be some correctable factors in these. For example, pioglitazone withdrawal or for example, controller smoking. So let's have briefly look at the pathophysiology. As it is written here, urothelial carcinoma arises from stem cells. And where are these located? They are just adjacent to the basement membrane of the epithelial surface. If you typically draw the wall of the bladder, uh, then you see you'll have about three to five layers of epithelium. And uh, just below that uh, will, be the, will be the basement membrane, then lamina propria, then muscles, right? Superficial muscle and deep muscle. So these we will talk about later, this is very important. Then we have the perivesicle tissues with fat uh, around. So this will be a typical cross section of our, you know, our bladder wall. Uh, so if you these stem cells are located somewhere here, they are adjacent to the basement membrane of the epithelial surface. And depending on the genetic alterations that occur, uh, these cells follow different pathways in the expression of their phenotype. So that means if there is a genetic predisposition, therefore, there can be changes in these cells. Now, the, the, this is a very important, uh, this statement is very important. Bladder cancer is described as a polyclonal field change. In other words, all those areas which are lined by urothelium, for example, starting from the calyces and the kidney down up to the bladder all along lined by urothelium and all this is potentially prone uh, to the same malignancy. In other words, it's a field change. That is the word, that's the reason why it is written polyclonal field change, right? So there is a field change defect. And uh, so if there is a heightened potential in the bladder, there will also be a heightened potential uh, in the uh, urethelium of the kidney and uh, ureter. So for example, if you have a typical TCC, transitional cell cancer, involving the pelvis of the kidney, then you're supposed to take out the kidney also, the ureter also, with a cuff of the bladder epithelium. And this is the reason why we do that, because this is a, considered to be a field change. Of course, genetic defects of various types are also uh, documented and uh, they impact uh, the treatment. So if I have to remember only one sentence out of this particular slide, I will remember this, that it is a polyclonal field change, urothelium. So any part which is lying by urothelium uh, becomes prone to malignancy if one area shows malignancy. Right, so now let us look at how does bladder cancer present. This is the outstanding scintillating symptom of uh, bladder cancer. 
painless, gross hematuria. We are not talking of microscopic hematuria. We talked about microscopic hematuria in another lecture. And uh, for example, tuberculosis is the cause of microscopic hematuria. This is a gross hematuria and anybody can see it. And approximately 80 to 90 percent of patients present with this symptom. But there are times when you have other uh, symptoms which mimic a bladder cell, which mimic various other conditions. Let's look at the next one. Irritative bladder symptoms, dysuria, urgency, frequency of urination. What is this? This is Lutz, isn't it? This is the symptom which we normally expect with uh, uh, hypertrophic uh, prostate or even for that matter any kind of outlet obstruction. This is Lutz. So in 20 to 30 percent of patients, the presentation is like this. They present with this kind of symptoms. It may be because there is already a tumor sitting at the bladder outlet and uh, giving rise to these symptoms. It may be so. It may also not be so. For example, carcinoma in situ uh, can give rise to this particular symptom complex. <coughs> so irritative bladder symptoms. And of course, if by chance there has already been a metastasis, then pelvic or bony pain and a lower extremity edema, we will see when we talk about the lymphatic drainage of the bladder, involvement of the lymph nodes in the pelvis uh, would obviously uh, affect <coughs> the lymphatic drainage of the lower limb and uh, give rise to a lower extremity edema. There can also be a flying pain if there is advanced disease. But it is very rare for you to have a palpable mass on physical examination. It is rare and definitely not so in superficial bladder cancer. What is this? We will talk about it later. Uh, not so much in, uh, not at all in superficial bladder cancer. Usually this mass is because of either the presence of a large clot uh, in the bladder or some kind of a retention which is going on and that gives rise to a palpable mass on uh, physical examination. So this is rare. So thing to remember this gross hematuria and next is to remember the irritative symptoms. These things are uh, important clinical presentations.